Good evening, parents, carers and students to this presentation on the GCSE options process this year for GCSE starting in September 2021. I want to start by showing you this slide and this short slide shows you the UK qualifi qualifications framework going up to level four. Our students will be aiming for level two qualifications um, in the next couple of years, and this will be GCSE grades four to nine. A grade four and above is a basic pass at GCSE, with a grade five being a strong pass. Anything above a grade four will be a level two qualification. Grades one to three at GCSE are level one qualifications. There are vocational qualifications equivalent to those levels, and I'll talk more about that a bit later. Students may well be thinking beyond GCSE to A-level choices and, and whether or not they'll study A-levels. A-levels are level three qualifications and there are indeed vocational equivalents um, of level threes and advanced apprenticeships, which are also at level three. Beyond level three are degree qualifications and higher apprenticeships. Students should be aware that for sixth form, most students will require five GCSE grades at grade four plus, including English and maths. However, many subjects have individual grade entry criteria, uh, many of which are grade six or grade seven. So when students are thinking about the choices they're making over the next few months, they should certainly be thinking about students, sorry, subjects that they are going to be successful in at GCSE in order to open up those opportunities for them. Now, although the new GCSEs are not that new anymore, um, and in fact, they began in September 2015 with most other subjects rolled out the following year, it's still probably worth spending a moment looking at the new GCSE grading structure compared to the old GCSE grading structure. So I want to point out that the new GCSEs in general are linear. So fewer subjects contain coursework and most, if not all, are examined at the end of the course. So what that means is that there are more exams because with coursework being removed, often this is replaced with a terminal exam. And with the fact that the exams are all happening at the end of the course, it does mean a quite a large amount of exams at the end of the course. It's one of the reasons that we offer for most students nine GCSEs now and that just helps to manage the um, increased amount of exams at the end of the course but there is some variation and some students will do more or less than nine GCSEs. Spelling, punctuation and grammar is assessed in some subjects uh, obviously in English and also in history and geography there are specific marks available for this as I've said, a grade five is considered a strong pass and this is the minimum that most students should be aiming for. As you can see, looking at the, at the blue chart on the right hand side, you can see the old grades there, A and A star is now equivalent to GCSE grades seven to nine and B and C equivalent to GCSE grades four to six. So what that means is there is more, there are six grades now um, at a C or above instead of the previous four. It means that fewer marks can move a student up a grade. So there's more stratification of the grades that are awarded to students. And actually at the bottom end, uh, D to G, grades one to three replace those four. Uh, so you will need more marks to move up one of those grades um, between one to three. So once you're in the four plus area, it becomes quicker to move up those grades with fewer marks. I'm just showing you this slide so that you can see that there hasn't actually been that much change in the proportion of students attaining different grade thresholds from the old GCC to the new. So roughly the same proportion nationally of students who got a grade A or above are now achieving a grade seven or above. And similarly, the same proportion of students who were getting a C or above are now getting a grade four or above. So nothing much has changed there. Um, it just means that students need to make sure that they get higher uh, marks than other students in order to get those high grades. Um, it, there is not a particular uh, percentage that gets you a particular grade. The percentages for GCs change every single year and it depends on how well the cohort does in, in a particular exam on a particular year. The percentages needed for grades are adjusted up or down as a result of how well the cohort does. 
On this slide, you can see the available subjects. So on the left hand side, you can see the list of compulsory subjects. Um, I think I included this on the letter I sent out recently, but also attached to the um, parent mail that went out uh, with this attachment, there was a booklet uh, which contains all of the subject information in more detail. And that is also being posted on Google Classroom for the students. So there's information on the compulsory subjects and on the optional subjects about the course content and structure and assessment. Compulsory subjects for students are religious studies, English literature and language, maths and combined trilogy science, that's biology, chemistry and physics, studied separately but uh, awarded two GCSEs. So that is six compulsory GCSE subjects. Students will also continue to study PE and PSHE, PSHE and there will be alternative curriculum subjects available for some students um, as part of the offering at GCC. So some students may uh, have made us aware of an early language entry that they're interested in doing. Uh, some subjects may, sorry, some students may be invited to do further maths and some may be invited to take part in our vocational curriculum. More of that a bit later. And also some students may be encouraged to uh, reduce their option choices by one in order to spend more curriculum time studying English and maths to support them to get the best grade that they can. Um, that makes a lot of sense for some students, given that their English and maths grades are uh, important subjects that will open doors to their next stage. So we will discuss that with you um, later on in the year if we feel that that's an appropriate thing for your child. The optional subjects are shown on the right. Um, as you can see, there's, there's quite a few there. And as you'll be aware from the letter, students will be asked to select three of those option subjects, although further maths and separate science will not use up one of their three choices. So students will take eight to 10 GCC subjects. Most will do nine, with some reducing to eight in order to take additional English and uh, maths. Some may take 10 if they opt into separate science or uh, an additional language or um, further maths. And we, we offer that bit of flexibility so that we're tailoring our offering to suit individual student needs and to make sure that we are giving every student the best chance in order to be successful. I think the key point to make about the number of subjects is that it is not the number of subjects that a student does which will determine how successful they are um, for their next steps. It, it will be the grades that they achieve for those subjects, however many they end up doing. So it really is the quality of the grades that they achieve, not the quantity of subjects they study. Uh, and that's a really important point. Um, as I've said, uh, they've got three option choices, uh, with some taking one, uh, one more. Obviously, students choosing separate science or opting for separate science will, will take this in the existing curriculum time and twilight, so it doesn't take up one of their three option choices. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about separate sciences later. Um, further maths, uh, in addition, in a similar way, will be taught during existing curriculum time. There might be possibly be some twilight at some stage in year 10 or year 11. The vocational qualification that we currently run is the VTEC in travel and tourism and it's offered at a level one and a level two. Uh, for some students this will be a good choice um, and again I've got some more information on that coming up. It's probably worth mentioning that at the moment at least universities are relying um, or have been in the last couple of years relying more heavily on GCC grades uh, to make offers because they've only had predicted grades to go on at A level with the removal of ASs a few years ago. Uh, so whilst they might not look at the specific subjects or pay as much attention to that, they will look at the overall grades that uh, a student achieves and certainly it's something to bear in mind um, in, in terms of what students choose, uh, given that the, the, student, the subjects, if they choose wisely, can often lead to better results, better grades being achieved. 
So I mentioned the English baccalaureate or EBAC in the letter and mentioned the subjects involved in that. And I said that uh, we encourage students to make sure that as part of their three options, they have included geography or history or a language. They obviously will study maths, English and science anyway. Um, but not that we kind of place too high priority on, on this specific benchmark um, other than to make, make you and the students aware of it. Uh, for students to be um, eligible for the EBAC, um, they need to be studying the subjects that you can see on the screen now. Um, if they're missing one of those, then, then they're not eligible for it. Does that really matter? Um, well, it's debatable. Uh, you don't get a, a certificate or something separate for it. It's just that you've got those, those qualifications in those subjects. They're academic subjects. They, they tend to be um, valued subjects. Uh, but, you know, it's not, it's not compulsory at St Richard Reynolds for students to uh, opt into those subjects. It's just something that we encourage. Bit more on the travel and tourism so this is more of a something that you'll be invited to so there, there may not be an option for you to opt into when you do your subject choices but we may say you know please indicate if it is something you're interested in so we can come back and have a conversation with you um, but just a bit of information on it it's a practical course and it's based on an understanding of how the travel industry is organized uh, it's much more broad than this, but there's just not enough space or time to talk about it in too much depth. But just to give a kind of example of the type of topics that are studied, they look at types of tourism and travel. They study the principles of sustainable tourism, the importance of the tourism sector to the UK economy and the role of consumer technology in the industry. Um, one of the key positives about this course is that it is mostly coursework based and that coursework is submitted throughout year 10 and year 11 in small chunks. It allows the student to build up their grade over time. There isn't one exam um, at the end. Students can have a second attempt at that exam if they want to improve their mark. But in either case, it is done by spring of year 11. Um, the great thing about that is that it gives students time to focus on their other subjects at the end of year 11 with one um, qualification in the bag uh, and it just means that students can organise themselves and organise their time a bit better uh, throughout the two years and at the end of year 11. Um, so it has a number of benefits as well as uh, a course that some of the students may find quite interesting. On to separate science. So as you will be aware, all, stu all students will study science, they'll study the combined trilogy course, but st some students may want to opt into separate science. About a third of our students opt in separate science on a typical year. Um, you, you receive three separate GCSE grades, so each of the subjects um, you'll get an individual grade in, biology, chemistry and physics. And the kind of students who might want to think about separate science are ones that are considering science A-levels and um, perhaps thinking about science related uh, work or careers or degrees. Having said that, there's nothing stopping students doing combined science, the double GCSE award from doing science A-levels, as indeed many do each year. The key thing to get into uh, science A-levels will be the grades that students achieve. So actually, we may well advise some students that doing the combined science award is more advisable than doing the trilogy um, separate science because they may well be able to get a higher grade by doing that. And so remember, uh, two grade sevens in the combined trilogy will mean that they are able to go on to A levels in the sciences. However, three sixes in the separate sciences would mean that they may not be able to do the A-levels. So just, it's not quite as simple as uh, if you do separate science, you will be able to do science A-levels. It's the grade that they get at GCC, which will make them eligible for science A-levels. To be able to do separate sciences, the entry criteria for this year was a grade five plus at the end of year nine. Um, this is something we re renew or sorry, review each year to make sure that students are set up to succeed and, and be on the right course. But any, any other questions on that, please ask your um, child to speak to their science teacher or Mrs Mason.
Most of our students will choose a creative subject or more than one creative subject. The creative subjects add breadth and variety to their GCC curriculum. Most students really enjoy studying these subjects. Uh, it is a different outlet for them. Quite often that translates into uh, real success stories for the students because they are willing and committed to put in the work that's needed to, to get high grades in these subjects because they enjoy doing them. Um, lots of them will have some strong transferable soft skills uh, and often these are highly valued by employers. Some of the subjects may well build confidence in the students because they can see their work translating into a higher grade so that it's not all riding on a final exam but actually all the work they're doing in lessons is contributing to that grade and they can see it happening over time. Um, I've, I've said may have coursework, actually most do have coursework but to varying degrees. So something like art is mostly coursework, whereas um, another subject might have 30 to 40 percent of coursework. But the key point there is that it, it, with these subjects, the student can get a, um, you know, a pretty secure amount of their marks in the bag before going into a final exam at the end of year 11. So if they work steadily throughout 10, year 10, um, and into the beginning of year 11 and follow the advice and feedback given to them, then these are subjects that they can be very successful in. Certainly if a student knows that they're thinking about a career in creative industries or indeed a creative A-level subject, then these subjects are definitely ones to think about. Um, it also means that they'll, they'll have fewer final exams. So the more of these kind of, more, more sort of coursework that there is in the subject, the fewer exams and the shorter exams they'll have at the end of year 11. So that will alleviate some of that exam burden at the end of year 11 and mean that they can divide their time more widely among other subjects that they've got exams in. So how should students think about making their choices later this year? Well, the fir first thing is, of course, their progress and attainment in those subjects. They will know how they're doing from their grade collection. They'll know how they're doing from the feedback they're getting in lessons and on their assessments and pieces of work. They, they will know. They'll have a, a good feeling for the subjects that they are successful in. And that will be closely linked to probably the subjects they enjoy doing. Um, so I'm sure a lot of students will have one or two subjects that very clearly uh, are ones they want to do for GCSE. Um, they might then struggle to pick the, the third one. Uh, it might be the other way around that actually they're, they're finding that they're successful and enjoying lots of their subjects and will find it hard to narrow down. Um, so sometimes that's an even more difficult decision. Key thing will be to talk to their teachers, particularly in the subjects which they are weighing up. Um, they perhaps need to find out a bit more about them at GCC to work out whether they're the kind of subjects that they'll enjoy doing. Um, but I've said, obviously, do subjects that you enjoy uh, or stu the students will enjoy. They'll be more committed to those subjects. They'll work harder in those subjects and ultimately be, be more successful in them. Um, do subjects that, that you're good at. It sounds obvious, but, you know, we do have students who, who sometimes do choose a subject and then, you know, we question, they question why they've chosen it. Um, and actually, there, there may have been a subject that they feel that they would have been more successful at. So it is really important to, um, you know, to, to buy into the things that you're already good at. Choose subjects that you think will help you in the future and that you might choose to study at A-level. And try to choose a variety. So don't choose all coursework subjects or all creative subjects. Don't choose all academic subjects. Choose a variety of subjects which give you a broad and balanced GCC curriculum. Um, you will enjoy that more and it will be a, uh, a better overall outcome. Reasons not to choose subjects, well don't choose them because your friends are, you might not be in the same class as them anyway, uh, and don't choose it based on the teachers you think you might have. Again, you don't know who you'll have in the next year. Some subjects have several classes, um, and of course there might be different teachers in September. So it's important to pick those subjects based on what you think about those subjects, not based on teachers or friends. Um, and although I've said, uh, I think I already said actually about not, not choosing, you know, too many of any, any one kind of subject, but actually if you try to choose um, three coursework subjects, you might get snowed under. Even with two, you might get snowed under. So quite often the deadlines for coursework come at a similar time and um, they, can, they can take up a lot of time. Unless you're a very organised person, 
uh, those subjects, um, doing too many of those subjects can be a bit much. So that's something to bear in mind. We would certainly go back to you if we were concerned that you've chosen too many coursework subjects. Now the year nine subjects will know the phrase or the expression GCSE ready. It's something we talk to students right from the beginning of year 10. Um, we, we hope they know that year nine is an important year, as every year is, but this is a year in particular that students need to develop their learning habits um, so that they can be successful when they start year 10. Um, lots of the content and skills that I'll be doing in their subjects this year are GCSE, uh, GCSE content and skills. If they can work hard this year and uh, develop those, those skills and that understanding, then they will really hit the ground running in September. So the kind of things that you know, students should try to work on developing this year to be successful are their, their academic maturity and their self-motivation. So the, that intrinsic uh, motivation, that means that they put in more than is asked of them or certainly don't try and do the bare minimum. They should be challenging themselves to make the most of the learning opportunities that are giving, given to themselves. So things like um, making sure they're not doing just the bare minimum that's required for homework. They should be responding to feedback that's given to them. And they should be trying to get involved in extracurricular uh, things. Um, the amount of months in brackets are the extra amount of learning time that is gained by doing those things according to the EEF, that's the Education Endowment Foundation. Um, parents should be encouraging the, the students to read daily to broaden their vocabulary and improve their spelling. Um, they should be encouraging them to write formally, so write letters to organisations or family friends, um, things like that to build essential skills for applications. They should encourage them to take an active interest in news and documentaries. Um, resilience and not giving up, very, very important because you know, they will get knockbacks in everything they do. And they will, there will definitely be times where they do assessments and, and don't do as well as they wanted to, perhaps despite doing a lot of work. Um, and really it's about them learning to uh, pick themselves up from that to see what the learning points are and how they can gain from that experience and improve. And also just to try and help um, to know whether they understand how to improve. So checking in with them and directing them to seek advice if not. So the next steps, well, at the moment we are, um, the students should be gathering information, that's speaking to teachers and so on. Um, they'll be receiving information from uh, subject leaders in the form of uh, assembly presentations in the mornings, and they will, they will have uh, meetings with their tutor from January. They've also got the information booklet that was sent out with this. Um, what I'll do is I'll send out a form via parent mail at the end of February and then I'll ask uh, parents to fill it out to express their child's preferences by the 5th of March 2021 and on that form um, you'll be asked to give three options in order of preference and two reserve choices and also indicate a preference between separate or combined sciences. We will then come back to some students to suggest alternatives if we feel the combination of subjects could be improved for that student. Um, after that, in the spring and summer, we'll be constructing the timetable and we will then um, work out wh which uh, options can be met for those students and we'll go back and let people know if there are any problems. But actually, um, previous experience tells us that, that usually we can, we can meet most students' um, requirements. We'll then let students know which options they've received at the end of year nine, so around about June or July. And here's a summary, really. Um, I won't read through it all. Uh, I'll leave it up there for a moment, um, or you can hit pause and, uh, and just have a look at this. But this is just a uh, list of all the kind of key dates, um, which I've just talked through, and a couple of extra ones in there as well. So um, all that remains to say is uh, thank you so much for listening and hopefully there was some information in there that was useful and please uh, let me know if you've got any other questions or ask your uh, child to come and speak to their teacher, their tutor, their progress leader or 
me and we'll we'll endeavour to help. Thank you very much.